We have Yom on this corner arguing that it would be better better to be buried alive as he spins a globe. Spider over here is going to argue why it would be better to fall to your death. And because he's looking like an idiot and I want him to stop, I'm going to let him go first. <laughs> go Yom. Thanks. Being buried alive. There's really no good way to have this happen. But I have found the silver lining. Number one. When they're forcing you into that casket, you can yell and scream and maybe they will grant you this final request. You can be buried face down so that the world can kiss your ass. You're in an unmarked grave, but damn it, you're either burning in hell or partying in heaven knowing that you are buried face down for that whole purpose. Buried alive? That. Hell no. No. I have a, well, this is a little personal, little personal side note here. A uh, little bit of claustrophobia. You stick me in a coffin, I'll probably shit my pants. And I don't want to be buried in my own shit. So I would rather fall and, you know, like, fall. Um, no, I would rather fall from, like, I don't even care how how high it is. Because you would enjoy the fall for the most part. And when you hit, you are either dead on impact or you are brutally maimed. And, and you die a either slow, way, painful death. And you could live for a moment knowing I just broke half the bones in my body. That was a good life, because then, you know, all those people that have never broken any bone, you're like, I broke half mine before I died. But still, like, if you're buried, you're like, first you have a little claustrophobia thing, and then you have a slight panic attack, and then they start pulling the, the, the dirt on, and then you're peeing and shitting all over yourself, and then eventually it collapses on you, and you suffocate and die a very slow, painful death. Versus, woo Fall to your death. Yeah, you could fall off your dragon. Or you could have lost money to your bookie, and the big fat dudes could throw you in the back of a Lincoln. You know what you're going to be doing? If I pulled you out of the trunk of a car, told you I'm going to kill you and threw you off a cliff, you know what you'd be doing for the first five seconds you're falling? This. Flapping. Hoping to God that you just figure out how to fly. I don't want to know where your brain cells went, but I'm pretty sure nobody knows that they can't fly. Oh, you're facing your I own. would not be flapping. You're really speechless. falling to your death by far because it's more chances that it's going to be an instant kill. Who who in their life says I want to be killed by a cheese grater for their and like and they're like I'd rather be shot in the face. They'd rather be shot because bullet dead cheese grater you're like 3 hours later still bleeding and they're now down to your bones and you can hear it scraping and you're still crying and screaming and you can We're still not arguing everything. cheese grater. Seriously. But that's my We're point here. It's you either a long slow painful suffocating shitting my pants death or a long or slow painful a long death. fall that could really hurt like a bitch when you landed but it would be very short lived. Could be a long Okay, 10 seconds then. It could be a long <laughs> slow painful death. You know for like three or four hours. I know as soon as that casket caves in, I've got about five minutes to live. So I could count to 300 very slowly, make my peace with God, hopefully I'm buried face down, and be done with it. You're lying at the bottom of a cliff, bleeding internally for who knows how long. Okay, but like when I die, people have to like scoop me up with like shovels because I'm splattered everywhere. When you're dead, you're already in the grave. There's no fun in that. You could haunt the place. Think about it.